Part of the reason why I wanted to speak to you and speak about this subject uh, in particular is because I find that the intersection of money and capitalism, quite frankly, and mindfulness slash spirituality, um, putting those in obviously a very big bucket, but mm -hmm. I find that the intersection of those two things is incredibly fascinating, uh, a really, really complicated place, I think particularly for women, because I think a lot in our culture will often package spirituality, mindfulness, even mental wellness to an extent with something you could buy mm -hmm. um, or, you know, the way your home looks or the, the way you dress, what you're putting, you know, what food you're, all of these things that are in my mind often just coded as very wealthy, very aspirational. I mean, obviously for a lot of people, what would first come to mind is something like goop, but I think there's also even in, you know, the, the fascination with, minimalism as a as an architectural and decor style and you know travel as a, a luxury product and you know even to an extent social media and how we're presenting ourselves I think we've sort of wrapped up what spirituality and what mindfulness really are and something that you can purchase but I also think for a lot of people there is a really really sort of tangled up relationship between um self-worth and value and direction in life with, with frankly how much they're earning or mm -hmm. what their job title is. And it's interesting because I think what has happened particularly with the COVID phenomenon where most people, so many people are losing their jobs, most people aren't traveling, most people aren't really able to consume the way they were consuming, they're not able to um, be, they're not able to uh, conspicuously consume so many of these things have stopped or really changed for people. And I think a lot of people, a lot of our audience is really asking themselves, where can I get a source of these things that is not tied up with money or not tied up with consumption? Um, and how can I release myself from the definition and the self-worth that is so tied up with money and status and professional success? So my first question is, how do you recommend people start untangling those two things, money and mindfulness, self-worth and consumption? Yes, that was, there's so many things I want to address. <laughs> um, I asked long questions. I was like, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of a two-part multi-series question. Yes. Um, I, I, before I answer your question, I want to mm. back up a little bit. Sure. Um, because uh, this is actually something I have a major problem with and one of the reasons why I do the work that I do. Mm. Um, spirituality, mindfulness is not something that you should buy, mm. right? I, I'm like really strongly against that. But we live in uh, mindfulness is, I think, just reached over a $30 billion industry. If you look at the face of that industry, it is a fluid, it is white and it is women, or men. Uh, I don't see LGBTQ presented, I don't see women and men of color presented, I don't see trans beings of color presented, um, and I don't see um, uh, uh, it accessible to uh, the, the resource of mindfulness, the education of mindfulness. I don't see it uh, being um, uh, uh, cited or sourced to the ancient tradition that it's from. Mm -hmm. I, I see it mostly being appropriated and, and used as a uh, I will heal you or I, I have what you need to be fixed. Kind of like almost a self-help yeah, relationship. It's turned, uh, yes, it's turned into that. And so I have a really big problem with that, and especially I've been in this field for, for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And I, I have moments in my career, not my career, but moments in my um, path I got caught up in some of that. Oh, I'll buy all the beads and I'll I'll go to this retreat and okay, so if I drink that green smoothie, then I'll my chakra will do what and then I'll feel better about what? Like um so I don't I don't wanna what what works for some may not work for others. Mm. And I really wanna be clear on that. And I also wanna be clear that um I think the industry is changing. I think especially now with um uh, the uprising of Black Lives Matter. We are seeing share. We're sharing, seeing share the mic uh, promotions and and programs, and we're seeing people really understand like, oh, we're doing a disservice to the sacredness of mindfulness, to the sacredness of spirituality by 
monetizing off of difference rather than using difference to bring people together mm. uh, or monetizing to like dominate and control rather than to bring people together right so um, I'm seeing fresh I have frustrations and I also have hope um, so what I would say for someone that's starting out is um, mindfulness as you as you can see from my story allow me to sit with what is of myself and not be overwhelmed by my pain, by my rage, by my anger, by the things that really were making me feel I wasn't worthy. And the messaging of our society is that a person in a black body like mine is that I am less than. And I had to unlearn that narrative. And so unlearning that narrative meant that I had to sit with the narrative first, mm. right? No one, I didn't buy anything to do that, right? I just yeah. sat and did it. Um, now, I also feel like there are free resources, there are free apps, there are people doing amazing work that are in the service of it. Um, so, so my suggestion is um, listen to your body when you're interacting with people offering you ways to be spiritual and ways to be mindful. You know a slimy person from a not slimy person, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I want to say, like, the first thing is to trust yourself. Trust that if you're on a seeking path, you're, that you'll, you'll find what you're seeking. And that to discern, to slow down and discern. Mm. Like, am I doing this because everybody's doing it and my social media feed is training me to believe that this is the next hot thing that's going to get me more spiritual or more mindful? Or can you slow down and be like, actually, that doesn't resonate with me. That's not for me. This teacher is. Or mm. this, um, this center is. Or this type of exercise is. Or actually, uh, I hate green juice. I don't want to eat green juice. I want to I wanna eat this thing, right? So I think it's really like discerning what is your all-you-can-eat buffet of mindfulness and spirituality and not what everyone else is saying it is. And, right. that, and that's difficult, right? Because there's a lot of noise out there. Sure. 